the champions and myself are, are really excited to see so many of you here today. And uh, we were not always that successful with our dissemination events. We organized quite a few across the campuses. But uh, the first one looked a little bit more like this. <laughs> so it was slightly demotivating. And Alyssa, who is here today, uh, went all the way to Winchester with me. And uh, unfortunately, uh, it was just an empty room. Uh, so, but we've learned from this. And uh, obviously, we, we have done something right today because you're all here. So thank you very much. Uh, and we hope, all of you, that you will enjoy the rest of the day. And uh, I also wanted to, to say a, a quick welcome to Karen Fraser, who is uh, over there at the back. Uh, Karen is from the, the, the HEA, and she has been supporting uh, our growing student network, student champions network. So thank you, Karen, for making the trip. today with the champions is basically what we did in the project, uh, the outcomes so far, and uh, what we're planning next. And you will see that uh, a lot of what we found out uh, resonates a lot with what Tanzi has been talking about. And you'll see a lot of parallels with that. And uh, I forgot to, to mention it earlier on, uh, but I'll, I'll say it now. We also wanted to, all of us, thank um, the Education Enhancement Fund who has been funding this project since the beginning and this conference is also part of it. So a big thank you to, to the university for funding this. So before I go into more of the project with the champions, um, I wanted to, to show you a couple of videos that were created by um, a previous colleague of mine, John Canning, who has been working in, in the LLS Centre. Uh, and um, basically, these are uh, showing two feedback situations, let's say. Um, and um, we'll, uh, we'll have a little chat about them and see if they resonate with you. Uh, maybe the champions can comment on them as well. Um, so I'm going to play you the first one. Hello, Susan. How can I help you? Hello, Professor Smith. Okay, so the eye solution man told me to do something there. Yes, and should now work. Yes. Okay, back to the beginning. Here we go. Hello, Susan. How can I help you? Hello, Professor Smith. I would like to talk to you about my essay. Yes, you did very well on that essay. I got 68%. I was disappointed not to get a first. Well, 68% is a very good mark. The essay was really good. I really enjoyed reading it. But I want to get a first in my degree. What do I need to do to get a first? It is very difficult to get a first. A first class essay needs to be that extra bit special. It is difficult to describe but I know a first-class essay when I see one. <laughs> Yours is nearly a first, but not quite. Okay. So, um, so yes, uh, quite an interesting situation. Does that maybe resonate with some of you? Uh, maybe uh, feedback champions can comment. Have you experienced this before? Yes, I see some nodding. <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so Susan wants to get better marks. She wants to get a first. Do you think Prof Smith's comments were helpful? Um, how could they have been better? How can they learn from this? What are your thoughts? Would you have given similar feedback to Susan, or would you have? Something different. I think a lot of the phrases were almost very familiar, and I think it's a, it's a platitude, isn't it? So I think it's a long platitude. 
Hello, Professor Jones. I only got 34% on my paper. Yes, Roger. I'm afraid I was very disappointed. I know you can do better. Did you read the comments I wrote? Not yet. There are so many comments. All I can see is red pen. Well, look at this first sentence for starters. You use the genetic instead of the data here. There are also missing articles here, here and here. The case ending here should agree with the object and not the subject. You have got your noun genders mixed up here and here, and here you have used the masculine singular where you should have used the feminine plural. Here you should have used the pluperfect subjunctive. This sentence here is confusing. I don't know if the adjective is small or if the noun is small. It makes a big difference. And here you use the future tense when the conditional future should have been used. Is that all clear now? Oh. I guess so. <laughs> okay, once again, what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, is that something you have experienced as a member of staff or, or as a student? I know I have. So, so what, what can we learn from this? Um, what would you have done differently? Or would you have done it exactly the same? <coughs> I mean, it just seemed like he said, what did I do wrong? And she, this is what he did wrong. He did very specific things wrong. So I don't want to be dense. What's, what's wrong with Professor Jones? That's a good point. <laughs> yes, Karen, yes, Ramesh. Language is a
instead of a, a, even a whole list, just um, focus on the things that were important. But then I suppose all of those things must have been important for the future. So. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe focus on two, three types of mistakes in this assignment, and then in a future assignment, um, focus on the other, so that it's not so overwhelming for Roger, the student. So, yes. Okay, so basically, um, what I what I was trying to uh, to say here, go back to this. Um, it's taking a bit of time, um, but basically, what I, I was trying to say is that so. Oh, oh it's. Thank you. 
slide was about um, you can be sure that's something that's going to go wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is definitely true. Um, okay, I think we'll stay on, on this view. Um, okay, so I think uh, thank you very, very much, Rebecca talking about the interviews. Um, this was a long process and uh, I think the, the, the champs can tell you that they really enjoyed it and they've learned a lot from it. Um, now, um, another part of the project was to um, create a video um, that summarised the, the project and the activities. And uh, <coughs> I am going to, to ask uh, Abby and uh, Ramisha to come and tell you a little bit more about it. Hello. <laughs> okay, so my name is Abby and um, me, Ramesh and Rebecca have been trying to start um, creating a video for the project. And when Lauren first told us that we were supposed to do it, she said just make a video about the project. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of stuff in the project, so we were thinking, oh my god, are we going to get it to fit all in one thing? Um, so we knew we had to create a script for the project, what we were going to say, and then we had to film it um, around the university, and then we had to do some editing to make it flow as well. Um, it was a lot of stuff, but I think it was really fun. Um, filming it was, <laughs> it was a bit of a disaster at first, and we had to keep doing it for three times before we got it done um, and then after that we kind of like handed the stuff over to Rebecca to edit and it was <laughs> so much work. The next time I saw Rebecca she looked so stressed out um, and like I haven't slept in two days kind of stuff so it was a lot for her. Um, we had a lot of problems um, obviously with editing because we got some of the dimensions wrong when we were filming it and with the filming it was really um, at first because every time we seemed to press play there was like a bus around the corner making so much noise and there were, at the time it was like a plane coming over it or something it was really weird um, but we managed to kind of like get through it and I think we've made a really good video that kind of like showcases the better points about the project and how it hopefully helps um, people get the information really quickly so I'm just going to um, play the video for you now and I am a Southampton BFI champion for SFC. Today, I'll be telling you a little bit about what the SFC is, what we do, and how you can get involved. Southampton BFI champion is the name of the student-led research project investigating how feedback is given within the University of Southampton. According to the National Student Satisfaction Survey done by The Guardian, our lowest score for the last several years have been our feedback score. This informs the university that students aren't happy with the current level of feedback given across the university. The Student Feedback Initiative was formed to find out why and how we can change this. We are currently funded by the Education Enhancement Fund, which supports innovative and creative projects which aim to add value to the student experience, making the University of Southampton distinctive. Our current supervisor is Lawrence Georgian. To share good practices, to inspire staff, to help students improve their marks by making the most out of their feedback, we want to promote. Sorry, I'm really to a minute. Um, I'm just going to give you a little niche now, who obviously was the star of the video. Um, so, about the schools that we learned. Okay, so it's a three minute video, so you can watch that later on the website. Um, but you don't have to keep up. <laughs> um, so the skills we gave. So we were all beginners. We've never really made a video before. So we did script writing. We did sort of um, learning lines and acting. And so if most of them work out, but I have a career now. Um, um, we definitely learned to be very patient and persevering. 
career through, um, we had to make three different videos because there was too much background noise. We met up with some um, professional staff to help us with the video. So there was lots of skills that we gained. It was challenging, but we got through it. And um, we definitely learned to work well as a team. We all had different ideas. So we gelled and decided to uh, um, put all our ideas together and um, make the video. So definitely um, gained a lot from it. It's a good experience. Thank you very much. Yes, so all of them were amazing, but uh, doing the video was, was quite a challenge when you have not done this before. Uh, you might have had a go at making a video yourself, uh, and it's a lot of work. So uh, thank you to, to all of you. Um, what I, I, um, I, I wanted to say as well, um, as part of the project, um, we started creating a website. Uh, based on all the, the data that we collected because we wanted sort of a central point um, to put all the resources that we, we were starting to create. So last summer we, uh, we had a, an intern, a student intern, helping us and we put together uh, a team of feedback channels who sort of acted as reviewer um, of the things that we, were, we wanted to, to put in the website and we worked together over the summer on this website and, uh, and it was challenging because uh, the website that we will show you a little bit later on um, is aimed at students but also staff and to create a website that has these two different audiences was quite challenging and um, we don't know if we got it right but um, so far it's, it's been well received. Um, and uh, I remember while working with uh, the feedback champions and, and then reviewing what, what was being added and the way it looked. Um, so I had, to, I had put a lot of text on a page uh, based on the report that another champions team had, um, had produced. And I uh, was quite happy that I had done justice to all the data that had been given. And uh, so I submitted it to the group. And, uh, and they said to me, wow, that's, uh, that's a lot of information there, uh, but that's maybe too much information. So, uh, so basically, I had put all that stuff thinking, wow, that's great, you know, there's so much interesting stuff that we gathered from the, from the interviews. But what the students were really, really useful uh, in, in making me realise is that less is more. I shouldn't know this, but... <laughs> And especially for, for students who were going to look at that page, it needed to be much more straight to the point and so that it could help students understand what feedback was all about. So that was a really um, great partnership um, uh, <clears throat> and we all learned a lot from it. So um, just move on now to... This PowerPoint is definitely not... <coughs> okay, I'll pass over to Alyssa, who's going to tell you a little bit more about the events that was organized. Hi, uh, I'm Alyssa. I was responsible for the staff events, so after we did all the interviews and the video and the website, we were in a position of uh, presenting our findings to everyone else. So we organized a couple of staff events and student events. The staff events was like, um, we were we came to almost all faculties, including Winchester, NOC, and uh, General Hospital, and we presented our findings to the staff. Whereas the studio events, we had a stand, we had a stand in the Susu, where people, uh, um, students were passing by, they could stop and then they could write down what they think good feedback was, what they think bad feedback was, and then in return we gave them a donut or something. And, um, just out of curiosity, who came to one of our staff events? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was initially quite challenging to build interest because as you can see, like not many people knew what this event was and uh, now we have like a couple of 50, 60 people now, which is a very good number. And, um, well, we had to develop a, a good strategy to actually um, promote this event. And the main skill that well, all of us have 
learned from doing the staff and the student methods that how to communicate communicate the purpose and the aim of the project properly because I think at, at one of our first events we were talk we had, we had a little discussion with the staff and it seems like they felt you were blaming them for not giving good feedback to the students and they tried, they started justifying the methods and trying blaming the system and the students and stuff and that's basically not what we're doing here. We are here to make people aware that there is a problem and we are here to offer a solution, not to blame anyone, not the students, not staff at this university, but we are here to make things better, so to say. And yeah, I think that's basically the main thing what the staff is doing then. I guess I'll give it back to Thomas. Thank you, Alisa. Uh, thank you also, uh, Alisa, was uh, the main person uh, putting together the presentation and the slides, and it was again a, a big job. And uh, for all the students who took part in the presentation, that was quite a daunting task um, because, as Alisa touched on, you know, we were talking about things that are an issue that could be done better, and it was sometimes tricky to find the, the right message or the right way to, to give that message. Um, but on the whole, a, a great experience. So, um, so I'm going to now pass it to, uh, to Claire and Giles to tell you about uh, a couple of events where we promoted the project externally. Um, hi, I'm Claire. So I was involved in all of the apart from the video, quite a bit of the other things that other chaps have spoken about. Um, Giles and I were also involved in talking to Karen from uh, the Higher Education Academy where we kind of swapped ideas about the project and things that they're involved with. Um, and other external presentations with the other chaps as well. Um, so it was just trying to get the word out there, trying to um, show everyone the hard work that we've done because there is a lot of work that's gone on behind the scenes and there was really, no one knew about it so it was getting it out into the, um, into the open. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Giles and uh, so I've been involved since, I think March? March last year? Yeah, so a long time now. And uh, so I undertook the interviews and I've been through that whole process. Um, but I think the main thing I'm up here to talk about is, um, so I'm one of my sort of student representative of a senior nature, and I think this project's been really useful because it's sort of informed some of that and it's helped me to act better in that respect. But um, one of the more interesting points that happened to do with the project was uh, I was invited to the Higher Education Review when the QA panels were here in February, so quite a long time ago now. Um, they they contacted the SUSU VP Education, they wanted people of certain characteristics and one thing they were interested in was getting someone in the room who was a feedback champion. Um, and as I was already there and I was a feedback champion as well, they sort of lumped me together with that. So I had a sort of brief but interesting conversation with the three reviewers who were on the panel that day um, about the initiative and they seemed quite interested in the fact that the university was doing some introspective things um, to try and improve areas that they deemed to be quite weak in. Um, and yes, that was, quite, that was quite interesting. It was quite brief because they were sort of having a marathon sprint through all these things that they wanted to make sure the university was doing. But um, I think it was quite productive and it sort of got the word out a little bit more. So hopefully those, because I know one reviewer at least comes from, I think one or two of the reviewers come from another institution. So probably they've stolen our ideas by now. But, um, and our skills. <laughs> So, skills-wise, um, lots of communication, like this, public speaking, um, presenting, transcribing, uh, talking to people we've never met, so interviewing, um, then writing up those interviews in a way that was legible, in a way that made sense not only to us, but to other people, um, which is quite challenging, and being organised, um, punctual, all these things that not necessarily come easily to a student <laughs> um, Kate, like happened, which is great. Um, being a feedback champ, I think it's great. It looks good on the CV. Um, great teamwork as well. Um, 
So I think there's been lots of skills that I've definitely developed. Uh, I think just in addition to that, it's really good from a student representative perspective to uh, have done the project because we got some really good data out of it, um, some really good conclusions. I think that's helped me. So I do a lot of program validation and stuff, which is very boring. But that's helped me to actually critique from that perspective to do with assessment that there are things that students want from when a program's being reconsidered and whether the design is appropriate. I think it's been interesting to have been involved with that reason. We have some nice camaraderie. We pick on each other a lot. Yeah. It's, it's been good fun.
So um, this table came up with relevant to objectives of the work, specific details, that it is actionable, something you can improve on um, in the future, personal and tailored to the student, um, and tailored to the level that that student is working at. Uh, this table came up with very, very um, concise, and I like it, um, that the feedback needs to be helpful, timely, and to the point, slash sort of relevant, because that was a discussion they were having at the table. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so the table I had came up with, to go in with three key points you wanted to work on, and the feedback is timely and in language they understand. And another table or another person on the same table said <laughs> verbal for me feedback and one on one discussion on written work, working through track changes. I hope I read that right. Um, and feedback where pros are shown against criticism, which I think is a good idea because it's not always good to just focus on the bad stuff. Okay, so from another table, we had simple language, concise, provide solution and or suggestion to improve, give web links, people or services available to help improve. And another um, table used the feed forward and said make feed forward um, feedback explicit, understandable to the student, motivational, clear links to the learning outcomes and timely. Okay, this table says that good feedback should be timely, which which means it should be quick and before the next assignment. It should be developmental, it should be detailed, legible, useful across multiple assignments, and shows positive or so ways to improve. And another table uh, says that, yeah, basically the same thing, um, how to improve and how it relates to work. Um, next we have um, the idea of instant feedback because, you know, as we previously said, uh, feedback after a month won't do much good because they're generally on to the next assignment. And then also it, there's an emphasis on how marks are given and what the marker actually looks for, so I guess that's a uh, <laughs> <already. laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Okay, and then next we have um, the idea of feedback split into sections, so for example, content, structure, grammar and comments, and then um, given within each one. And then essentially the, the total score is the marks for each added together. So um, essentially the same detail over general comments. Um, okay, so another table, um, some key points about feedback. It should be enabling, personalised, timely and constructive. And there should be a measured capacity for change and there should be focus on making progress. So I think the key thing here is the progress so it should be something that you can take forward just like the feed forward concept so it can help you in improving in future whereas not just looking back at something you've already done and then can just forget about so I think all your answers really um, match what other colleagues and other students have told us uh, and basically that's, that's what they have told us. There were some fancy animation on the slide, but because <laughs> the PowerPoint is not very, it's not working very, very well, you have them all in one go. So that's what students focused on, constructive, legible, timely. And if any one of those are lacking, for them, they consider that the feedback is useless. So it's good to keep in mind. And legible, it's not gonna come as a surprise, but <coughs> students can't read the feedback, that's not going to be that helpful. Um, staff also talked about timely, constructive, and as expected, should refer to the learning objectives. So, um, something as well that I wanted to, to point out is that timely is also something that appears in the LSS, as you might uh, be aware. Um, something else that comes in the LSS and that you touched on as well, is um, was the feedback detailed enough and has it helped me clarify what I didn't understand? So these are obviously um, things that students and staff uh, consider as uh, important, but these are just the data priorities. 
So, what else have we learned? Um, well, that was another question we asked um, our interviewees. Uh, what are the different ways in which uh, feedback is delivered to students? And that was uh, a very interesting question. Um, if I ask the question to you now, um, what can you tell me? What are the different ways uh, where feedback is delivered? Anybody would, would like to give, give it a go? Yes, please. Person, feedback on an essay. Yes. Other ways? Yes. Verbally. Yes. What kind of situation? Uh, we do it in labs in computer science, so we have both labs speaking to the students. Um, <coughs> okay, so not only lecturers giving feedback, but okay. uh, those reps. Yeah. So in our first year, we got video feedback for our lab because we had our labs. There were what, 300 of us. We had a lot of sessions and we didn't get our actual reports back until after we did our next one. So we had video feedback of generic stuff. So if you looked, watched the video with a copy of your lab report, you could actually pick up on the mistakes that you made. So it wasn't specifically tailored to you, but you could get a lot out of them and it was really good to compare back to them as well. Yes. And I suppose, I mean, that's a great example because. It's, uh, it's something quick because you got feedback straight away, but it's not too, too time consuming for the, the member of staff either because it's a one-off but available to the whole classroom. Um, I think one hand was, yes? So you can give group feedback. We, um, on the program, I think we, um, at the end of each when we had monthly evaluations and we had the exam exam feedback, I tend to do a little summary of feedback for all that cohort of students. Just to tell, give them to give up, you know, how you've developed them and what the external has said as well. So, so yes. just about individual feedback. Yes, so individual mm -hmm. group feedback mm -hmm. as well. So, written, verbal, um, anybody else would like to? Yes, Abby? Um, one of my lectures um, was given feedback through Facebook or like Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really useful because obviously everyone's in those kind of stuff anyway. And it means there's just something that you can do with them. You don't have to email or go to office hours or anything, you just ask a question and then answer you. Okay, another way. Social media, yes. Yes, Claire? Peer feedback. Indeed, yes. So not only the lecturer, but students. A little bit like you were saying before, although not quite the same, but yes. Any any other ideas? I think we covered most, uh, most types of feedback. Um, so this is what students and staff that we interviewed told us. So interestingly, a lot of the students that uh, we talked to, they were not aware at first of all the different ways. We had to guide them to get them to think, well, what about this and that? And yes, then they could see that all the different ways that you mentioned were feedback. They were all part of feedback. But at first, what they focused on was the written comments they get on their assignment. So, and also what was quite clear is that they don't see feedback as a dialogue. Uh, they see it as a series of disconnected events. And that's what, um, uh, I think it, it kind of um, reminds us of what Tanzi was talking to us uh, about earlier on. And that might be one of the um, effects of uh, a sort of modular system where things don't seem connected to each other so much. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, your colleagues were very well aware of all the different ways feedback is given and they see it, and like you see it as well, as an ongoing uh, dialogue with students and between them and the students, where students actively engage with it uh, and this ask uh, questions whenever they need to. But as you can see, quite a different perception between staff and students. Okay, so one of the final questions that we, we asked uh, our interviewees was um, what do you do with the feedback? Uh, and as a member of staff, what do you expect your students to do with the feedback? Well, again, quite a, a bit of a different 
um, perception um, between staff and students. So students told us that um, they see feedback as very module specific, which echoes again what Tanzi told us. It's summative and it's not to be questioned. So that's that's not the best way to, to look at feedback and, and that's not so, so much what we would like students to see feedback as. Because this means that they don't see the relevance of feedback for other modules. They, they only see it as relevant to the module they're taking at the moment. And, and that it's useless once the module is over. So that's probably why a lot of the time when students get their assignment uh, at the end of the module, they don't, they don't even bother reading the feedback because they think, well, you know, this module is over, I'm, not, I'm never going to take it again, it's pointless. Um, and they also don't feel able to come and ask you uh, before an assignment or after an assignment to get more feedback, to uh, clarify the feedback, because they don't, they don't feel confident enough uh, to question things they don't want to ask silly questions. Uh, on the other end, you probably think most of the time, well, I have opening um, hours and uh, I don't see students. They don't come to see me. Uh, well, there might be a few explanations there. Um, and, uh, and you probably expect students uh, to realize that they're receiving feedback in all the various forms that we touched on earlier on, um, and that they should actively engage with it. But the students have a different view of it most of the time. So when it comes to feedback, when what we've sort of uh, come to, to, uh, to the conclusion of is that uh, students are quite confused. Uh, and it, First, they don't always recognize it, and they're not always sure what to do with it, if, if anything at all. Um, on the other end, staff sees it as, as an ongoing dialogue, um, but students see it, see it more as a, a series of disconnected events. So what can we do? Uh, well, something that uh, we, um, we, we concluded is that uh, there's a lot of information about feedback that is needed. Uh, students need to be educated. We need to, to help them uh, recognize feedback, know what it's about, and, and also what their role in it, their role in the process it, uh, is, so that it's, it's more effective and helps them. And, uh, um, what we also, one of the conclusions was that uh, as members of staff, we need to sort of create a, a comfortable environment for students to feel able to come and see you, to question what they received, the feedback they got, uh, to ask you for feedback before an assignment, um, so that there is more of a conversation about feedback, and so that it's not then perceived just as disconnected events. So in other words, uh, we need a supportive feedback culture. I think um, Russell talked about it um, at the very beginning and um, in the Feedback Champions project, uh, we, we believe in this. Um, we, need, we need the help of everybody uh, to make this happen. How do we do it? Um, that's, that's a challenge, a, a challenge that um, that involves everybody, um, but we have started um, producing, putting together resources that could help people do that. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the website and Ember is going to come in and, and tell us about what her role was uh, in, in the website. So as I've mentioned before, we did it Last summer, we carried on working on it and adding things to it. Um, so it's, it's got a lot of resources, simple things for students to read. There's a, there's a video there to tell them quickly what it's all about. 
Um, and then um, something that Amber is going to talk to you about is the good practice database. Over to you, Amber. Hey, hey, so I haven't been on this project as long as everybody else. I only started on it a few months ago because I worked in the same um, office as Miroz over the summer. And I was also working on the other three um, championed projects that um, Sarah will tell you about a bit later. So what I did was, using all this amazing research that they gathered over the past year or so, I created profiles for the website, which is gathering all the data and then putting it into um, <coughs> profiles which are very easy to read and accessible. So I really recommend that you all um, take time out to have a look at this website and encourage your students to also look at it themselves so that they can understand what feedback is. Because it, it is so detailed, I didn't realise how many profiles there was when I was going to start. Laurence was like, there's 60 profiles you've got to write, so which was a bit of a challenge. But it's really impressive the amount of profiles there are and how it's really gathered together all the research that they did. So I really recommend that you take a look at it. Good. Thank you, Amber. When you haven't, you haven't said too much about all the work you've done, but like the other champs, um, Amber has been really dedicated, and uh, we, uh, you know, th there were times where we didn't really know what to do with some of the data, but we got through it all. And I think um, the the result is uh, is quite useful, and, and that's what that's what we aim to do. So, so has, as as uh, Amber said, have a look at it. Have a look at it with students. Uh, we want it to be a tool. For you but also for your students um, and it could be the start you could take it um, to start a conversation with your students uh, about feedback and how they can get the most out of it um, and then what else can you do what else can we do for you uh, just book us in um, ask us ask us to come uh, to talk to you um, Rebecca again has a uh, I've done a, a very success, successful workshop, let's, let's call it, um, in biological sciences and there are a couple of member of staff there that are from biological sciences and who came to the workshop. Uh, Rebecca, do you want to say a couple of words about it yes. and how you handled the whole thing? Um, well, essentially we had a lunchtime drop-in session and it was actually, it was quite popular and um, there was actually quite a lot of discussion about it because, you know, um, you know, some staff have really strong opinions about feedback, and essentially that really allowed us to like share some ideas and like you know trade opinions, and it was a lot of fun. So um, I recommend it for your own faculty. <laughs> and I think Rebecca, you, you haven't said, but uh, that that was quite challenging because uh, I mean I was with Rebecca, but. Essentially, Rebecca was in a, in a room in front of 21 members of staff who had you know, quite strong opinions about feedback and, uh, and she did absolutely brilliantly. And I think for members of staff it was really good as well to be able to discuss these things with, with a student um, and discuss these things openly. So, so yes, let us know uh, if, if you want us to come and talk to your students to your colleagues, uh, would be, we would be more, happy, more than happy to do this. Um, so now, um, leads me to talk to you uh, briefly about the future. So, as I said before, um, our ultimate goal is to try and create this feedback culture, this supportive feedback culture. Uh, we, we have started with um, producing the website and the resources, uh, but we also have identified these four areas where we would like your help, your <coughs> input, because we, we think that they will be crucial in creating this supportive feedback culture. And these are going to be the, um, the focus of this afternoon uh, and the discussions that we will have with you. So um, I think um, that's more or less um, it for, for us today. Um, one more thing that, or two more things I wanted to say. Um, the, um, the goal of today is also to, um, to ask you for some help with this, with this project. 
Um, and uh, as you can see at the back of the room there, there is a, an action wall. So um, if, you, if you want to book us in, if you want to uh, volunteer to uh, be part of the project in the future, if you have other ideas that you would like to share, if you have challenges that you would like to discuss <coughs> with us, uh, please put your name down. Um, we would be really happy to hear from you. And uh, I see a few students in the room, not too many. Hopefully they will come for lunch and for this afternoon. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the students who came. Obviously thank you for, to the feedback champions, but thank you to the um, students who joined us. Um, because I think that will make our discussions this afternoon uh, much more interesting. And, uh, and to reward those students, there will be a prize draw this afternoon. So uh, please stay with us. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be a, a, quite, a quite interesting afternoon. So that's it for all of us. Um, I think uh, you, you got a good idea of what we try to do, uh, but obviously we're happy to take any questions. Thank you very much.